Hey guys, welcome back to Real Housewives Recaps. I am so glad you're here. Okay, we are continuing on with Lady C's Megan and Harry, the real story, and her updated version, talking through it, discussing it, and enjoying the heck out of it, and I hope you are too. So if you're following along, this is actually part seven discussing this. Yes, I know, we've made it so far. It's wonderful, and I can't wait to keep going on this with you all. If you're reading along with me, I'll be picking up around page 263. Again, we're in uh, chapter eight, and we'll be going into chapter nine in this discussion. So much to talk about. This is the bump, bump, bump stuff. <laughs> whatever you think's going on under that dress, whatever's happening in these pictures, that's what we'll be discussing. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't not laugh at pictures like this. I mean, terrible fashion sense. One of the worst dresses I've ever seen. The fit and whatever is happening under that dress, whatever you believe it is, it's square. Why? Oh, why? Why would you do that? All right. And the theme of sticking with the newer stuff that we're talking about, because I've already done the, of course, the recap on the original. We are going into Archie's birth. Now, she doesn't go over the details of Archie's birth the way... Oh my gosh, you guys, spare. That is the funniest part of that book to me. That whole book was so ridiculous, but his accounting of the birth story of Archie, if you want some head scratchers, read that part of the book. I don't recommend reading that book, but I was going to... That's probably the best part as far as anybody who's been around somebody that's given birth or given birth or has a friend who's given birth, whatever, a sister, whatever, <laughs> you know, it just doesn't go down like that. It didn't make any sense and it did not help their case at all. All right. So the interesting thing that Lady C brings up is talking about Archie's birth certificate. So um, let's see here. Archie, of course, was born in May, but unusually, the 5th of June, Archie's birth certificate was amended. So Megan apparently announced that the palace, quote, had forced her to make these changes. And Lady C points out, well, that's quite a claim, right? And it left it vague, right? Like possibilities, like what could they, wh why would they make her do that? It doesn't make sense. Nothing they say makes sense. Lady C puts out there their speculation within certain circles that Megan was laying the groundwork for just in case anything were found out hypothetically, right? Like uh, to quote Lady C, the preparing the ground for future eventualities, just in case speculation surrounding her pregnancy and Archie's birth proved quote, inconvenient to her, end quote. So that way, she's doing what she does best, both of them. They put this paper trail out there, so that way they can lay the blame at the palace's doorstep should anybody investigate and say, hey, that's weird. Why'd they change the birth certificate? All right, so Lady C says, huh, if that's the case, could somebody be so calculated? To which I say, heck yes. Have you met Megan? <laughs> yes, she is that. She is calculated. But the new part that Lady C goes into is in Finding Freedom. And she even mentions Endgame. Oh, I'm shuddering because that book. <laughs> um, <laughs> talks about the three long years between her accusation of the Istwards to Oprah Winfrey. And how King Charles and... Um, Catherine, Princess of Wales, how their names, quote, emerged. All the twists, all the turns, all the maneuvers that, you know, Megan got up to and her, well, her repeated playing of the race card might be up her sleeve in regards to this. Basically, in a nutshell, could the royal family end up being accused of being responsible for a surrogacy arrangement of which, According to Lady C, they had known nothing about, but which they could well be blamed for. I never would have thought of this. Of course. Of course. That is just evil. I'm, I have to cover my bases here and say we're playing hypothetical game. So let me, let me break it down. Hypothetically, if there were, I don't know, a pillow under this shirt, if you thought this thing looked crazy and it wasn't real, and hypothetically, she did use a surrogate, you know, like if that did happen, then um, could she possibly be trying to 
lay blame at the palace if she's ever found out. I think that's an interesting theory I didn't even think about. But she goes into, Lady C goes into such, she does a great job of explaining this. Like why, Megan is just known to be calculated. We've all seen it. So this would be another calculated step for her to do something like that. Oh my goodness. It's scary. When I read this stuff, I actually get freaked out about the amount, I keep saying calculated, but the amount of, well, calculated maneuvers and the need to paint themselves always as victims. Well, this would play right along with that, right? If they were found out, then they could, again, hypothetically, if something was to be found out and they were found out, they could say, oh, the palace made us do it and throw around the ist words they love to throw around. I didn't even think of that angle. But I am not a narcissist like these two. Like I suspect these two are. I can't officially accuse them. But you know what I'm saying. They're narcissistic. They sure seem it. And uh, yeah, that's pretty darn clever. Way to go, Lady C. I didn't even think about that angle on things. Let's go into the weirdness of the birth certificate. So apparently Harry's title of prince had been previously omitted as part of his name. Well, they decided to amended that, amend that. So now the father's name read as, quote, His Royal Highness, Prince Henry Charles Albert David, Duke of Sussex. Then Lady C points out in a study of oddity, Meg's name was also altered. But the change, rather than clarifying, obfuscated. Her name, her given names, i.e. the unique identifying aspects of her identity, were removed. Isn't that weird? Archie's birth certificate now stated that, quote, Her Royal Highness, the Duchess of Sussex, and not Rachel Megan, Her Royal Highness, the Duchess of Sussex, was his mother. So think, I'm going to read that again. Think about that. Her Royal Highness, the Duchess of Sussex, was the only name now that was, it was amended to say that on the birth certificate, not Rachel Megan. So that's freaking weird, right? So Lady C points out, hypothetically, this opened up the possibility of speculation that a woman registered at Portland Hospital as Her Royal Highness, the Duchess of Sussex, but not... Rachel Megan, Her Royal Highness, the Duchess of Sussex, might have given birth to Archie on the 6th of May. Isn't that odd? So by doing this, they had to legally amend the document, right? And it was so that it could more accurately reflect, well, to quote Lady C, the true facts. In other words, they were now implicated. So the belief is that this would have been done to rope the palace into a scenario in which they neither had say nor knowledge, but they would have to share responsibility for the actions just in case something um, wild might come out in the future. Isn't that weird? It's so weird to me. Just thinking about these details, and again, I go back to calculated. It's very calculated. And the press got a hold of this, okay? They thought she had done this for snobbish reasons. She wanted um, her, her name listed as Her Royal Highness, the Duchess of Sussex. And they speculated it was in case they divorced, then Meghan could always use that name. But, but Lady C explains, no, this is nonsense, and they were just rolling this stuff out. They weren't really paying attention to what was going on, which is basically what she was saying about the alleged possibility of a moon bump, right? They were just kind of not paying attention to what was going on, and the ones speculating weren't speaking up, which again flies in the face of Harry and Meghan's claims of, oh, the press were awful to us. No, they were actually helping them cover their asses. And Lady C explains, by the press doing that, they gave Megan a free pass, which she did not deserve. Um, basically, just, just chalking up to snobbishness without investigating. Why would she change her name on the birth certificate? And she it's hard to explain, but she goes into it has to do with the legal paperwork and going into the line of succession and things you have to do. And so by amending it like that, then you can kind of, 
I don't fully get it, honestly. It's kind of wild, but it has to do with the line of succession and the legality and the paperwork and all. And by changing it like that, I think it's purposely meant to be ambiguous and to confuse. So that way, if it ever did come out, well, it was listed as this, not Reagan, or Reagan, Rachel, Meghan, Markle, you know, all that stuff. Then on page 269, one of my favorite parts of this chapter, Lady C goes into... There's a root cause to all this confusion. It has to do with Megan not being real. Quote, she's incredibly spoiled and utterly selfish. She's also the most pretentious person anyone will ever meet. Have you ever seen her handwriting? I love it. I, I totally agree. Almost as contrived as her personality. Her whole life's an act. Like all people who are basically hollow, she covers it up with all sorts of of gush intermingled with unreasonable demands, including wanting a buffer zone between them and everyone else. That is brilliant and so well said. And I think about their unreasonable demands. Remember when they moved to Frogmore and they put out those (laughs) demands on like public about walking dogs and not going near them or looking at them or whatever the BS was. It was absolutely ridiculous and really offensive. Okay. But speaking of living arrangements, uh, Lady C goes into, of course, we had heard this before. Megan had been angling to be offered Windsor Castle. Can I say that and underline that point about a hundred million times? That, That bitch wanted Windsor. Of course she did. Are you crazy? Who do you think you are? Both of them. And then idiot Harry. There's only so many times I can say that guy's an idiot. But truly, that guy is an idiot. Actually, I could say it a lot more. That guy's an idiot. He should know that that was never going to be a possibility. And yet he seems completely clueless. Again, he thinks that she has Diana Stardust and everybody's jealous. So he lives up his own ass. Who knows? But, um, so yeah, so she had been angling to be offered Windsor Castle. Can you imagine? Oh my God. That is such a scary thought. Obviously it would never happen, but just the idea of those two in Windsor. Oh my gosh. I love that place. It's one of my favorite places in the whole world. They would destroy it. They absolutely would. Okay. So when it became that apparent that that was not possible, they settled for Frogmore. But according to Lady C, they thought they were getting Frogmore House, not Frogmore, sorry, Frogmore Cottage. But can I just say, all right, Frogmore Cottage is gorgeous. They are such spoiled babies. I can't stand them. They spent all that money. What was it, like $2 million or whatever it was to do it up? And they're just so ungrateful. Everything. They They don't... They're not grateful for any opportunity or anything that they were given. They're awful people. We should be getting paid for this. Your whole life was paid for. You got Frogmore, you ungrateful bastards. Uh, Okay, so in his memoir, Spare, Harry's statements are um, sufficiently, and according to Lady C, doubtlessly and unintentionally equivocal to lend credence that that's what happened because she goes on to talk about how although they tried to put a good face on things, it was obvious that they were disappointed when they realized they weren't getting Frogmore House, but instead Frogmore Cottage. So a member of their circle, their social circle told that to Lady C. So Megan must have been furious. Ha ha. Plates breaking all over the place. But still, what an ungrateful bee. They complained about not caught. So they got a bigger place and complained about that. I would like to remind everyone they lived at Not Caught, and uh, um, William and Catherine lived there for a couple of years. Other people have lived there for a long time. It's They're beautiful properties they're getting for free, and they get to do them up and make them nice, and they're still complaining. Oh, they're still complaining about it. Okay. Um, so never once did she indicate that she felt lucky or grateful or appreciative Again, that's what I'm saying as well. It's just always complain, complain, complain. They do the complain, never explain thing, right? It was, let's see. uh, So Lady C says in her opinion, it was furious acceptance. So the truth is you could see that she felt that Frogmore Cottage wasn't good enough for her. And um, yeah, and then she, Lady C believes that Harry felt the same way. Of course, He thinks that they're rock stars, according to them, royal rock stars. As far as he was concerned, if Andrew could have Royal Lodge, he should be getting Frogmore House. 
So their fury was then reflected by the press when it was discovered the cost of the refurbishment. So it was 2.4 million pounds. Isn't that incredible? So the critics, of course, wanted to know why should taxpayers have to absorb this cost when they're given free accommodation? Unbelievable. So Frogmore Cottage is a state-owned building, and um, and yet Harry and Meghan are trying to go in and demand all this privacy and that things like that get paid for. And they, they, I mean, Lady C points out, they should be paying the cost of the refurbishment in return for living rent free. But of course, of course not. They're just, again, being totally unreasonable and finding a reason to play victim. All right. Then Lady C goes into that ridiculous show that, she, that Megan put on at the Wimbledon game. You know the one I'm talking about. Where she was surrounded by a sea of empty seats and wearing jeans and a hat in defiance of the Wimbledon dress code. Okay, well, and you remember all that where the members of the public were taking selfies and she had her, I don't know, security tell them stop that and turns out they were taking pictures of the players. Privacy, privacy. Uh, it's too funny. But demanding privacy when, you know, there are cameras and stuff and you're in a public place. It's absolutely ridiculous. But the reason she brings this up is to add on that in 2023, at the wedding of a friend's granddaughter, Lady C met one of the ladies with whom the protection officer tried to shut down as she was taking a selfie. She was still pissed, rightly so, about this encounter and was delighted to tell Lady C how she told him off in no uncertain terms. She found the whole incident both offensive and unnecessary. Lady C points out she's shown her actions here how naive and unreasonable she was being. No one who appears in public has a right to privacy. Courtesy, yes, but privacy, no. Now remember, she kept trying to say she was going to modernize the monarchy or whatever, the royal family. And Lady C points out you cannot monetize, monetize, that's good too, modernize an institution where you don't even understand the basics of the culture whence it emanates. So if you don't understand their culture and you don't bother to learn about it and you think your way is better than theirs, you're not only telling them that you regard your your way and yourself as way better than their way and themselves, but you're ultimately conveying lack of respect for them and their ways. Okay, so then she goes forward and she talks about how they had hoped that this whole surrogacy question would just blow over. It'd be a storm in a teacup, right? Okay, and then here's the juicy new part. So in 2021... Lily was born. I won't say her real name. We're just calling her Lily. Okay. Lily was born in California. Now, she points out that much of this baby's gestational period took place during lockdown. So we didn't have the opportunity of being treated to another eight, nine, or 10 months, whatever. <laughs> I say that because they're always shrouded in mystery and the dates never match up. 12 months, whatever it is. Uh, belly clutching, which... Um, Lady C points out was a merciful relief. Uh, so there may have been the added benefit of not being exposed to the scrutiny to which she had been subjected as she had en enacted bizarre performances during Archie's gestational period. I want you to think about what Lady C says there. And I love, again, Lady C, the way she says things, it's, it's sometimes in the things that she's not saying, but by calling it Archie's gestational period. Whereas most people you'd say, you know, so-and-so's pregnancy. Nope, that's not what she's saying. Archie's gestational period. Okay, so Lily arrives, right? And um, it was orchestrated with the curating exactitude for which Megan has become justly renowned. So according to Lady C, she's always been a controller. Shocker. Control claw. Very controlled as well as controlling. Even her father had let slip the fact that in early days when they were still speaking and he had confirmed to journalists how calmly self-possessed his daughter had always been as well as how effective she was at always getting her own way. It was around this time they were about to be interviewed by Oprah. 
to lay the groundwork for that, they announced the impending birth of their expected daughter on Valentine's Day. People Magazine um, helped because, you know, they always work with People Magazine, but she points out other glossies such as Elle, Vanity Fair, and different ones followed. Irrespective of their complaints about British press, who in fact covered the news positively, their publicity machine in the United States was in full force. Their message from their, quote, longtime photographer and friend, you know the one. Oh, I can't stand that guy, that Misan guy. And I say it like that because the way he treated the twins, the Sidley twins, and their father, Team Kirk. Um, I love Kirk. He's such a nice guy. But um, yeah, the way he treated him, I'll, I'm just not into Misan at all. He's always her lapdog as well, him and Omid both. Okay, so he was declaring that they were soulmates. Of course they were, he was. And it was a privilege and an honor to have their sunshine on everyone. Blech. Much made of their perfect love. And okay, who cares? Let's keep going. So uh, let's see. Thereafter, and after all of this, race would become a dis- destructive and divisive feature in their agenda for about the next two and a half years, according to Lady C. And I would say, hold my beer. They're still going on. Um, only after Harry denied toward the ends of 2022 that either he, neither he nor Megan had ever accused the royal family of the Istwards. Remember that whole thing? It was the press that did that. Uh, uh, yeah. On Oprah, you said because of Archie's skin color, he wouldn't get a title. She knew what she was doing. I'm not going back over it. She knew what she was doing. Um, let's see here. And then Lady C points out, you know, some of the wind had fallen out of those sales, but then it was reinflated in November of 2023 with the publication of Endgame. <sighs> we know what happens there. I can't with this garbage. Again, not the book. The book's lovely. Lady C's great, but I'm saying they're garbage. Harry and Megan, <laughs> they always do this crap. It wasn't us. It was the press. And then, yeah, they contradict themselves constantly. They can't even keep their story straight. Let's see here. Uh, Lady C points out there were some interesting things, such as in a photograph. I'm not going to post it because I don't post his photographs because I just don't. I'm not going to, you know, the Misan's photograph. But if you look at them, they are crazy looking. You'll have to use your brain on what you think's happening under that outfit. But you know the ones, the ones that were shown on Netflix, some of those crazy photos. Yeah. Uh, again, Kirk is, uh, great at explaining why those make no sense. Check out the Sidley twins and their explanation of that stuff. But anyway, Lazy points out Megan was meant to be about five months into the gestational period, but it looks as if she was nine or maybe even 10 months pregnant. Okay. So that ends chapter eight and we're going to go ahead and move on. I'm going to pick it up in the next, um, the next episode. I just wanted to go through that part because it is so mysterious and I'm still stuck on the whole birth certificate of it all. I find that so odd, but also frightening to see how much planning, plotting was going on, how much, um, covering one's asses was going on and, the manipulation of the, what I believe is manipulation of the public and just all of it. And, and still at every turn planning to throw the royal family under the bus. It's, it's kind of crazy to see, but I want to thank you guys so much for sticking with me. I hope I wasn't too choppy in this part. It was just kind of hard to go through. Lady C is a wonderful writer. Sometimes her words are like, whoa. So I have to like break them down and explain and, and try to figure out you know, what exactly she meant when she said things, because she's very thoughtful in the way she explains things. But I just found this part so interesting, and I hope you did too. So we'll move on from here and continue on with this book. And I appreciate you guys being here and supporting the channel. I hope you all have the best day, and I can't wait to bring you more stuff like this. Take care. Bye-bye.